that, that one radio button. I didn't know I didn't touch Welcome back to this clown's garage. This is an 87 Trans Am. Now, what we're doing here is we're trying to get the speedometer to work. Uh, originally, this car came with a 700R4 automatic. Uh, the original owner then put a T5 in it, and the, the current owner changed it to a T56. So, we're putting this Dakota digital box in. This particular model is SGI 5C. And we're gonna use the current VSS on the transmission over here. And uh, through this box, make the speedometer work. We're gonna change the signal to work. Now over here you're gonna see this box pretty much, the way you wire it is, you have a power here, a run hot. So whatever uh, is switched ignition hot, that's the power you're gonna use. I'll show you how to do that. Then we have a ground which you ground from the box here, on this terminal here, straight to the body of the car, ground. Sensor ground. Uh, there's two wires on a sensor. One's a sensor ground. That sensor ground is a black wire that goes straight here. And the other, uh, which is a yellow, which I'll show you, from the sensor, goes here on the input. Then you have one output that goes straight to the speedometer. So uh, let's start here. This is, the, this is the part that we're gonna use for the VSS. The sensor on the transmission. This is from a 96 Camaro. This is an air charge temp sensor. Uh, that's a part number PT191. BDW makes this. Engine management technology. And I'll show you what the sensor looks like. Uh, you could use this what it looks like. And this is the signal wire, the yellow, and the black is the ground. You can also use, I believe, an uh, engine coolant sensor. Should be the same thing. Um, as long as the sensor looks the same, you could use it. So I'm going to go ahead and underneath the car and show you where this is going to plug in right now. Alright, now I'm underneath the car. As you can see here, this is where the tail shaft is. Um, right there, that's the connector. It's facing downwards. Again, this is a T56 manual uh, transmission box. So right now I'm going to go ahead and find the stock wiring so I could mate it to this sensor over here, to this uh, pigtail, sorry, this pigtail right here. And I'll show you how to get to those wires. So first thing I'm going to do here is to get inside the, cent to get inside the center console is to remove this shifter ball. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Next order of action is a screw here, a screw here, and there's a screw right in the middle over here where the ashtray is, but it's out already. So I just basically have one screw left here, this whole thing pops right off. Uh, everything just pops right out. In this case, his cigarette lighter didn't work, so this was not clipped in. So we'll do that later. Just clip in, it should work. You just pop these clips out. You twist this. This comes out. You pull these off the side. You pull it down. Same thing on this one. And this last one here. Just gotta pry it off. Get a little flathead in there. Pop that out. Push the other side back. Pull out like that. That's the center console that comes out. Over here, just take the bottom panel off to, cut, to access the 
vehicle speed buffer. So seven millimeter bolts. This one here. One here. In the middle. Another one in the middle. Are you trying to see, you're trying to look for the ECM there? Comes yeah, just down. <laughs> and this yellow box here is the vehicle speed buffer. I'm going to connect these wires here now. So I'm just going to strip these, put some heat shrink tubing on them. These are 12, 12 gauge. Alright, so now you just bend this over. I like bending things over. You bend this one over too. This is bug connector. Twist it in. Put that one in there. Just crimp down on this. You do it where it says insulated. Tug on it, it's good. Give it one last tug, then I'm gonna heat shrink this down. That's it, you're good. So I'm gonna put this grommet in where the shifter boot is, so it goes down to here on a step drill. So I'm just gonna put the tape so I know how deep to go with my drill bit. So now I'm gonna show you where I'm gonna drill this. Yeah, go ahead. All right, right there. I'm gonna go right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill that right through right now in that plate. So we checked underneath and there's nothing in the way underneath. So it's a perfect spot. All right, now we're gonna feed the wires through. Pull through the grommet and push the grommet right through. And it went right through. Just pushed it in. Right there. Okay. Yep. Right there. I feed it slow so I can just guide the wire up. <laughs> That's it. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And we're good. Okay. Grommet's in, wires are through. All right, so under here, you see that's where I uh, connected the connectors right there. And the speed sensor is right there. It points downwards. And I just zip tied it here and ran it all the way through here. And that's where it goes through the grommet. Right there. We're using Aluminum tape to use for shield as a shield for no interference. They use this on duct 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 work. So we're just gonna wrap it up. The two wires from the sensor. All right, so we just fed it through here, along there. Now pull it through there. Radio out of the side, going in and snip it through.
is like a dull plastic keyway. Goes in the other video. So, Mr. Master Electrician here, George, will uh, explain to us how this, v this VSS buffer works and what we're going to do here. All right, this is a fairly simple device. Okay, uh, a VSS buffer is just something that converts the analog sig signal to digital signal. Okay, so any car that has a digital dashboard or a digital signal into the fed into the odometer and the speedometer. Um, the processor chip needs a square wave signal and the way to know the difference of the square wave and analog wave from the actual sensor itself is pretty simple. There are only three sensors in the world that actually can rotate, get, can actually measure rotational speed. So you have your VR sensor which is a variable reluctor sensor, you have a Hall effect sensor and you have a optical sensor. Okay. Now the optical sensor and the Hall effect sensor are both a square wave sensor. So what that means is that the output signal of the of those sensors will be from zero volts to a, to either a five or a twelve volt signal, depending on the sensor itself. That's going to be a square wave signal. So something like that sensor can be fed directly into a processor chip to measure rotational speed because it can count zero, twelve volts, zero, twelve volts, zero, twelve volts, or zero, five volts. Every time it goes from zero to its given voltage, that's your square wave signal that creates the signal for the computer actual processor chip to be able to count. Okay, now those two sensors, you can easily identify them because they'll have three wires. You'll have a power wire, you'll have a ground wire, and then you have an output signal wire. The output signal wire will be the wire that sends your square wave signal to your processor chip. Okay. Now, the VR sensor, which is a variable relux sensor, is a two-wire sensor. And that sensor actually outputs an AC signal, which is a shine wave signal. A processor chip can't have an AC signal fed to it. It has to be a DC voltage square wave signal. So that's where a VSS buffer comes into play. The VSS buffer basically takes your two-signal, two-wire sensor. In this car, we have a two-signal wire for yeah. the sensor. Correct. The, the T56 has a two-wire sensor, which, is that, which means it's a VR sensor. That VR sensor actually outputs an AC signal, which is a shine wave. So the, sing, the sensor will swing up and down from positive to negative in a shine wave. A shine wave, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. And your buffer converts a signal, okay? On the older versions of GM, um, the buffer module does the conversion for you. From 90 and up, the buffer module is actually built into the ECU. So the output signal, go the right. si the input signal from the transmission goes into the trans into the ECM, and then to the the cluster, which is the output signal. So you're not gonna have that yellow box if you have an NVO <clears throat> buffer. Yeah, you won't have your buffer. It's be part of the computer. Exactly. So the buffer basically takes a signal, which is your input. So you have your yellow and purple wire, which is your input signal from the from, VSS from the VSS sensor, which stands for vehicle speed sensor. Right. So your VSS signal goes in here. Okay, now remember, it's it, the polarity really, there's, you need to check when you hook the sensor up, it, just switch the wires around for the, to get the correct polarity, um, but that's fairly simple to do, and you can't really affect the module by turning, you know, from hooking it up the wrong way, um, but the output signal will be reversed, you can just switch the wires back around. Uh, the module itself converts it, now this one, you'll notice a lot of wires on the output signal, and that's because, for some odd reason, GM has two output signals. One is for the cruise control and one is for the uh, actual odometer and speedometer. Okay, so on this particular unit, the green wire, the green wire goes to the odometer and this is your output signal. The brown wire is your, uh, is your, imp is your output signal that goes to the ECM to tell the ECM how fast the car is moving. It also helps uh, control the lockup solenoid for the transmission. Your red wire is fed for the cruise control. So the difference between the cruise control output and the v and the 
odometer output is one is a 4,000 pulses per second, all right, and the other one is a 2,000 pulse per second. Okay, and the black wire is your ground wire. Okay, I apologize. It's not pulses. It's not pulses per second. It's pulses per minute, ppm. Okay, so you have uh, a 2,000 to 4,000 pulses per minute. The only the only one we're really worried about is is the, is the gauge because this car no longer has an ECU. Um, this is now controlled by a, a DFI system. Uh, so we're gonna wire the T56 sensor into here and this is gonna create the, the square wave we need and then we're gonna wire in the d digital decoder to manipulate the pulses per, per minute to get the correct speed reading through the actual speedometer. Okay. Where's the photo box? Yeah. It's now putting the power wire. And that's ignition hot. It goes straight to the decoder box. You just push it in the terminal here. Good. This is output signal wire to the cluster. Output one, which is here. Okay. So what you do is you push this down and you put it in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Would you put that output one? Yeah, output one. It's just to, to try output one first. The signal wire to the cluster is output one. We're trying that first. See yeah, how that works. Instructions from Dakota says to try output one first before minute trying to, any other manipulation of the signal. So now we're doing the ground. So we put an eyelid on it at the end. And we're gonna put it underneath the car. Okay. I'll show you what that looks like once he tightens the bolt. And it's right under there. That's where we put the ground. Let's do this. Let's this and that goes to where it says ground on the box. It's that red wire. I don't know if it's gonna zoom in, but it just says ground. On the code, the code digital box. Also, we went through a couple of these output signals and the best one that we could find was the output signal five. So that's where we put the output signal going to the dash. Okay, now the ground from the sensor wire, and it's the signal wire. The green is the green is our ground is our is our, is our ground from the sensor, and the red is our hot is our signal, signal wire from right. the, from the sensor. Okay, so we're gonna put the ground in first. So just squeeze the tab. Slide the wire in. Wait a second. Just make sure it's twisted well. One. That's great. Red is going to be our. That's going to be our input. Yeah, that was a sensor ground. So you put that in the sensor ground. Now the signal, you put it in the input. Okay. Perfect. Okay. And those are in good. Now the shield, the shield has to be grounded. But it only needs to be grounded on one side and only one side. Meaning the other side of this cable where you started the shielding yeah. shouldn't be grounded anywhere. It shouldn't be touching a ground. Exactly. So what we're going to do is we're going to just attach. This is really a cheap way of making a shielded wire. But it works just as good as anything else. Actually I've had better luck using aluminum foil to shield the wire. 
than some of the expensive shielded wire you go out and buy out there. So we're just going to ground it. Okay, so now that this wire here is wrapped around and twisted into the aluminum foil that we use to wrap this is a separate wire, right? It's a separate wire, yeah, right. as you can see. And we're going to attach this to our ground wire. We're using red wire only because we only had red wire at this moment. Yeah. So Make normally, black. yeah, normally it would be black. Just you know, colors really don't mean nothing as long as you know everything's hooked up correctly. All right. So what we're going to do is just make a connection here. The one we're connected to the shield, we tap it to a, a ground wire, the actual ground that we're putting into the body. Okay. And again, this is just for the shield interference. Yes. Noise the whole purpose of a shielded wire is to block any interference with your signal. Now, if you had this, if you had interference, your speedometer. Would either not Gauge. read, would not read, or not read correctly. Will be fluctuating a lot too. Correct. So what we want to do here is now that we have the box, we can just tape this all off, make it look neat. Off. Just take a piece of wire. All right, over here, all of these buttons, these four buttons, we have on the off position. And one says up, one down over here. These are, these are push buttons over here. Now, when, as you're driving, you would have uh, either a car next to you, going, going um, same speed as you, and you, they're gonna tell you how fast they're going. And you can press up or down to calibrate the speedometer. Or if you have like a GPS and it tells you exactly how much you're going, you can do it that way. So from the vehicle buffer, we need the green wire. And you need the pink wire. Pink is power, green is output signal. That's pretty much it we need from the vehicle to speed the buffer. And over here, as we showed you, the input is coming from the sensor, the signal from the sensor. Uh, the sensor ground is the, the black wire in the sensor. In this case, I made it to green. And your ground is the ground wire we put here onto the body of the car. And that's it. Now we're gonna go out, go, we're gonna put everything back the way it was in here and just go on the street and calibrate this. Alright, now we're driving. What I did was I pressed the needle went all the way up where we started the car. We we're driving around and went straight to 60 miles an hour. We we're doing probably 20. So I just held down the down button here. And now we're at 53 miles an hour on the 51 miles an hour. 50, sorry, this thing could go right. <laughs> yeah, it bounces, but bounce a little bit. 56 miles an hour on the GPS, and we're reading about what is that? 50, 52, yeah, 52. So 51. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hold the, the up button on this. See if I could uh, push it up. I'm gonna do that now. up a little bit. Is that right? I think so. The angle I have up here is a little off, so I'm asking the driver. I'm going driver. exactly 55 miles an hour, 56. And it will be so you're 50, still a little off. Yeah, you're off, man. You're off by a couple miles an hour. Off by a couple. So, so I'm going to push the up over here, hold it down. I think it went up a little bit again. I think so, yeah, it did. Yep. 55. So we should be good. And that's the completion of the install of the Dakota Digital Box. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. You know you want to. Also, like me, share me, do whatever the hell you want to me down there. Explain this cloud to go around. See ya!